Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm in the PTB with the new killer. Uh, actually, I just call her Mommy Crow, so... Uh, oh, there it is. Her name is The Artist. Yes, it's a good name for her. I just call her Crow Mommy. What's uh, I don't know what's wrong with Crow Mommy. There's nothing wrong with Crow Mommy, okay? I'm just gonna go with Crow Mommy, okay? So today we're gonna go over her three perks, three teachable perks, and all of the add-ons that I have for her. Um, I believe I have every single add-on, I could be wrong, but I did dump about 800k blood points into her blood web before using her, so I'm pretty confident. I may be missing one or two, if I am I apologize, but for the most part I do have all of her add-ons. So we will start with her three teachable perks. So her three teachable perks start with Grim Embrace. So uh, Grim Embrace, uh, each time a survivor is hooked for the first time, you gain a token and it reaches up to four tokens because there's only four survivors per match. It can be hooked for the first time. Uh, so once all four tokens have been acquired, the entity blocks all the generators for 20 seconds and the obsession's aura is revealed to you for four seconds. So her next perk is called Scourge Hook Pain Resonance. So with this perk, it looks like at the start of a trial, up to four random hooks are changed into Scourge Hooks. You'll see their auras in a white color, and it's a really kind of cool white color. I'll put a little tidbit of that here of what it looks like in game. And then at any time a survivor is hooked on a Scourge Hook, the generator with the most progress explodes, and it instantly loses 9% progress and will start to regress. So it's kind of like Explosion, I believe that's the Nemesis perk, um, except um, I think the only difference is that it, it doesn't give them the incapacitated status. So it just makes the survivors scream that are on the generator and reveal their location. So it's kind of like the Nemesis perk in that way, but not fully. So it's kind of, I would kind of say pointless almost. It's like we already have a perk kind of like that. It's just kind of like a second perk without the status effect that you get from the Nemesis perk. It just seems to me kind of like a copy paste without the status effect. But if, if I'm wrong, please tell me in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. And then her last perk is going to be Hex Permimento. Wait, Hex Pentimento. Pentimento? Pentimento. Yes. This perk happens when survivors cleanse totems. So anytime a totem is cleansed, you get up and rekindle them. And uh, for how many rekindled totems you have, the greater their effect. So the first effect for the first rekindled totem reduces survivor's repair speed by 20%. Up to two rekindled totems is reducing survivor's healing speed by 20%. Three rekindled totems reduces survivor's recovery speed from being down by 20%. Four rekindled totems reduces survivor's exit gate opening speed by 20%, and five rekindled totems uh, blocks all of the blocks all totems from the entity. So it's kind of a nasty perk if you get it even up to like rekindled three totems. It's kind of nasty because it's like a whole nother perk in itself. So you're basically dealing with perks at that point because you've got your four perks and then rekindle three reduces recovery speed. That's kind of like sloppy butcher. The recovery speed is kind of like sloppy butcher and four rekindled um, reduces survivors exit opening. That's like, it's like Freddy's perk. Remember me, I believe that's what his perk is. So remember me is kind of like the four rekindled totem perk or effect. It's kind of really nasty if you can get it to work, but that's only if you get survivors who like the cleanse totem. So it's it's a very situational perk. It has the means to be very, very, very strong, but only if you get a team that cleanses totems. And right now, boon totems are very, very, very huge. So boon totems, especially with the new survivor out who has another boon totem to the field and where survivors are going to bring like a full boon totem build or very close to a full boon, boon totem build, it's very situational. And I honestly don't think it's a good perk to come out at this time with the boon totems being meta, but you could get lucky and you could have absolutely no one 
have a boon totem build and you they cleanse all the totems but you know very situational now we'll go into her add-ons okay and we'll start with her iridescent add-ons her first iridescent add-on is called garden of rot so garden of rot when a survivor affected by dire crows completes the repel action they are afflicted by the exposed status for four seconds damn looks like her second ultra rare add-on is iridescent feather the artist gains the undetectable status effect when birds of torment is in cooldown and she holds no dire crows decreases the maximum capacity of dire crows by one okay so this is going to be more for sneaky plays uh, so her next one looks like we're getting into very rare out of the iridescence is called ink egg increases the maximum capacity of dire crows by one decreases the time dire crows stay idle before disintegrating by four seconds uh, the next one is matthias baby shoes and the survivor within five meters of an idle dire crow have their auras revealed for three seconds this could be really nice so the next very rare add-on is called severed hands which is terrifying uh, so it looks like this one works with any survivors near a survivor being swarmed by the dire crows will also be swarmed. Oh, this one's really nice. So now into the rare add-ons. First one is going to be charcoal stick. And it looks like the dire crow's aura is no longer visible when in flight. The dire crow's aura is visible for 0.5 seconds when summoned. Looks like her next one is going to be darkest ink. I like the names of these add-ons, man. <laughs> when dire crows swarm a survivor, it afflicts them with the blindness status effect. The effect persists for 15 seconds after dire crows are repelled from a survivor. Okay, her next rare add-on is oh grief, oh lover. When dire crows swarm a survivor, it afflicts them with the exhausted status effect. Ooh, that one is nasty which is not very hard at all to get dire crows on a survivor. If you can catch them when they're on a gen before they start to run from you and you get that exhausted statics effect, like bye bye dead hard, bye bye sprint burst, live, any exhaustion perk, say goodbye to that. Their next rare is going to be silver bell. When dire crows swarm a survivor, it afflicts them with the oblivious status effect. Okay, so this is another one that's kind of like a sneaky add-on. The next and looks like last rare add-on is called Thorny Nest. Survivors damaged by a dire crow are afflicted with the hemorrhage and mangled status. Kind of like Sloppy Butcher. So now into uncommon add-ons. First one is going to be Automatic Drawing. Decreases birds of torment cooldown by 1.5 seconds after a dire crow disintegrates from inactivity. Okay, so it just... Uh, it's a cooldown for your ability. So that's always nice. It's always nice to have an add-on that, you know, decreases the time of your abilities for any killer. The next one is Festering Carrion. Decreases Birds of Torment cooldown time by 0.5 seconds after a dire crow takes flight. So this is another cooldown, but it looks like this one is after the dire crow takes flight. And this one is after it disintegrates from inactivity. So I guess it's a, a pick and choose for you. Which one would you prefer? Next one's going to be Still Life Crow. It increases the time Dire Crow stays idle before disintegrating by four seconds. The next one is called Untitled Agony. When Dire Crow swarm a survivor, it afflicts them with the hindered status effect for 1.5 seconds. Looks like the next one's going to be Velvet Fabric. When a survivor attempts to repel a dire crow swarm, the swarm aura remains visible for an additional 1.5 seconds. Looks like we're getting into common ones now. So the first common one is Chocolo Corn. Increases the time dire crow stay idle for before disintegrating before two, by two seconds. The next one is Oil Paints, which increases the dire crow's killer instinct detection range by 1.5 meters. That's also a good one. These are pretty good common ones. Usually the common add-ons are like not good so the next one is called thick tar and it increases the time for survivors to repel a dire crow swarm by 0.5 seconds and then the last one i have is vibrant obituary this one increases the length of time for a dire crow's killer instinct reveals survivors by 1.5 seconds 
Uh, so that's, that's all of them that I have. I would say this is a very strong killer in the right hands. All of the killers, all of the killers are very, very strong in the right hands. But I would say this one has more potential than what I've seen the last two PTBs. Like, Pinhead was not really well received as far as I'm concerned, as far as what I saw. And the one before that, who even was that? I lose track of the killer so easily. Nemesis. Nemesis came with a lot of, you know, bumps and grinds, and but he was a little bit too overpowered, and I would say she's really balanced, but she does have the potential to be overpowered. I would almost say, like, this is kind of like a, almost like a Huntress 2.0, except, you know, it goes through walls. So obviously Huntress can't throw her hatches through walls, although, you know, sometimes her hitboxes make it look like that, <laughs> but... I would say somebody who plays Huntress would enjoy this killer. I really enjoy this killer. I'm not giving her up for my main, which is Demo, but I would definitely say she could easily become my second favorite killer. Uh, but that's all I have for you guys today. If there's anything that wasn't clear to you guys, if you'd like me to go over anything else, uh, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Um, and if you think I didn't explain something well, I'd love to hear that as well. I'm here for any kind of feedback, but thank you guys for so much for watching and uh, you guys have a good night.